Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another frequency counter called FT20 50 megahertz by Lassen Electronic. So I think it's a Danish product. And look at that. Nixie tubes, six of them. So we've got some it's reading out in kilohertz always. So there will be some decimal points we need to figure out here. We got the gate, we got four different gate times. And we can hold and delay the display time. And this is also the power on off switch. Mains power cord has been uh, cut. So that means I will definitely need to open and inspect what is going on before I fix anything. And here is a, this is probably a LME, okay, LM305, no, 9. So that will be the regulator for all the low voltage stuff. So let's try and open this beautiful old counter. So uh, inside there is one big circuit board with a lot of TTL ICs and I believe that is 1971. That will be all the time-based dividers and the clock oscillator, crystal oscillator. And so yeah, that's probably the oscillator stuff. So the different outputs from the time base goes, of course, to the time base switch. So we'll select the different timings. And see the black wires goes to the decimal points. That is pretty neat. So it's all handled with this one switch. And uh, that little coil and the transistors, that's most likely the signal input, amplifier and something like that right and uh, the rest of the counting and driving the oh those 74 41s so those are old so that will be a four bit in and then driving a nixie at high voltage and then we got latches for storing the counted uh, four bit each and of course up here we got the counters just decimal counters all of those and uh, yeah the traditional power switch capacitors only one high voltage diode a single rectified high voltage and a bridge for the low voltage and another bridge and a little pre-regulated transistor driving the other transistor and I think that is more or less all we got. <laughs> Handwritten voltages out of the transformer and the input voltages go to a little filter and thin thin wires the red wires you see down here they come from that filter here on the bottom and the red wires go to the switch so it's a two uh, layer circuit board a very beautiful layout and all the tracks they are nicely yeah, nicely laid out. I'm quite impressed for 1970 design. This kind of nice order. You think about this was made on transparent film and little tapes, <laughs> tape reels. So of course you can see some of the tracks a little bit out of alignment like that left one there. But they're, they're pretty good for the way that this was made and I don't find any 
leaked capacitors or any black blown up components like that. So I think I'll try and uh, put in a new mains wire and see if it works. Also think I can just unscrew the front panel and then flip down the front and this will give me access to clean this. Can you see this plastic? I can hardly look through it. So here's the glass after a little bit of cleaning. Now you can see all the way through. How nice. And the front is made of two pieces of metal, a very thin and a thick like that, to make room for the glass and holes for the screws to hold the glass. Pretty, uh, yeah, unique design. And I also cleaned the tubes. Look at that. I don't understand exactly why they use they're using these little connectors like that right but not on all of it so a lot of it is just soldered wires into the circuit board but not all of it i mean then what is the point i don't understand that exactly but i think i'll try and assemble this uh, here in the front and then I'll try and uh, take it apart here at the back and put in a new uh, mains uh, wire. So here's a little trick for you. If you go to the local junker, electronic waste, I mean, score those cables like this. They're, they're just for free. People throw these out. Or you can cut them from old television sets or whatever. And then you have a cable to uh, repair. Stuff like this for free. I think I'm ready for the first uh, power on. I will try the on off switch. So I will turn on mains and see nothing happened. I adjusted it down to 220. And. Oh, it is in 10 seconds. So that seems to be fine. All this blinkity blinkity. I don't understand why it's not reading zero. So there seems to be a problem with some zeroing or something. Let's try and input a, uh, a signal. Yeah, exactly. Nothing happened. So some input kind of Stuff is not working so maybe we could try with one how about one megahertz and see if that is the no it is not how about two volts I don't know I just couldn't uh, let this go so all the signals from the input amplifier ends up in one signal alone and that one goes to this IC here and this IC is not mounted so that is why this uh, counter isn't working so this one is a 74196 nicely written on the circuit board so I went to the peel.dk website and looked up the schematic and clearly enough this is the first counter. <laughs> Why is the first counter made different compared to the next and the next and the next? I find this a little bit weird but this is how it is made. And uh, the fun thing is that uh, the good Peter from Peel also gave me another one to look at. So yes, I got two of these in my lab today. And the other one, look at that, is also missing this IC. Here's there's a socket. And this one is, of course, also not working. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I will have to go and... Uh, ask for some of these ICs. But meanwhile, we can look at the schematic. The schematic is divided into three pages, so it's uh, real easy to uh, zoom in 
on what is going on here. So the first schematic shows the power supply and the input circuit. I find it really uh, nicely done with the over voltage protection with D3 and D4, the field effect transistor for ultra high uh, input impedance. You can measure stuff without overloading. And it's uh, of course biasing um, with R3 and uh, R2, the field effect transistor into correct uh, operation area. And then there is a, a buffer amplifier and a lot of transistors. I don't understand why really we have all those transistors because this uh, IC31 should be enough. But, uh, well, this is how they made it. And they also change the gain. If you see, there's a, uh, a gate uh, circuit that goes into um, transistor 2 and 3. So I think it is some sort of a, a gating, or it is enabling, or it's changing the gains, or something like that that's going on here with the two emitters like that. So that is a little bit uh, funny. And then the output in the bottom right goes to IC1 pin 8. So let's look at the next page. That is the timer unit. And in the bottom left, you see uh, what they call IC1. This is the 74196. And this is uh, the counter that uh, looks like it's driving the latch system and then the 7441 that drives the first Nixie tube. It looks a little bit different in the real world. Uh, it looks like I got a, um, I got 7490s, uh, decayed counters. I got one for each of the tubes. And uh, then this uh, IC is like a prescaler. So I think this uh, schematic is not exactly like the version uh, I have the last page uh, of the schematic uh, that will be the oscillator in the upper left and then all the dividers and counters uh, for the time base and the, of course we've got a little bit of uh, flip-flops uh, handling the display time and the reset uh, and all that kind of stuff quite uh, yeah this is <laughs> <laughs> Not a big surprise. It's made like uh, like that, to be honest. So let's see here inside the circuit board. So this is IC1. And the four bits from that goes to the first latch. This latch goes to the Nixie decoder driver. And then, of course, again, latch, driver, la 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 la. The same for all of them, right? Up here, we got the other digits counters so those are just the normal 7490s and if you count here we got six tubes we got six of the nixie drivers and we got six latches but we only got five counters up here because the first counter is that one so there's probably a special reason for that maybe it's faster i don't understand that but that's probably what it is but without this one nothing happens so we better go and get some of these so now it is a few days later and look what i got so thank you very much peter for supplying and uh, i think i'll put in a socket so we can try a little bit because this the new one is an LS and I think the original they didn't use LS and there's something probably with speed and trigger levels and stuff so uh, let's try and see what happens the difference between cleaning after your soldering so here's uh, yeah, my little cleaning and then you can see all the original solderings, how nasty they look. And some of them even goes this bad. It's quite easy to uh, clean this. I, you can use either alcohol or acetone. Acetone is more effective, but it also smells real bad. Definitely super effective. 
So let's see if this works. Here you go. One kilohertz. So it works with the new ICN. There's a little bit of contact problems. So if this is one kilohertz, we can also do one, two, three, four hertz. And it will do like that. Hey, let's let's try the 50 megahertz. It should be able to go real fast, this thing. So 50 megahertz. And then I should, of course, go... We have a little bit of, so that's probably a sensitivity issue. It is not, so let me give it 40 megahertz. Okay, <laughs> okay, so it's not <laughs> working all the way to 50, but that is 40. We could just try and crank it up slowly. Ah, okay. So that is 45 megahertz. And I give it 46. And then I give it one more volts. No, no, no. And that is probably due to this LS chip. Um, so we could probably just uh, change that to uh, one of the faster ones. But anyway... We are back in business, 40 megahertz. So, so I think that is all I wanted to show you about this fantastic old frequency counter with Nixie tubes. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you soon again. Bye-bye.